H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. So, first of all, very warm welcome to H2K Infosys. Uh, my name is, uh, let me just do this. Yep. So, uh, about myself, my name is Jeram. I work as a senior developer and uh, almost around 15 years of experience in Java G2E and have worked in different domains like telecom banking and healthcare. Okay. And uh, the agenda for today's uh, session would be that we would be talking about the organization, the job opportunities, especially on Java, the modules which I'm going to cover up, and also the enrollment process. And in the meantime, if you guys have any questions, as I said, uh, there's a chat window. You can just type in any questions related to Java. I would be happy to answer all your questions. Okay. All right. So with that, let's get started. Uh, talking about H2K Infosys, uh, it, H2K Infosys provides world-class service and IT training with uh, real-time project work for corporates and individuals. It does special IT training for MS students in US, and it does software design development, QA manual automation, and performance testing and maintenance as well. And it also does uh, IT staff augmentation. It does uh, job placement assistance and also tech support. All right, so this is in brief about H2K Infosys. If you want to get more information about H2K Infosys, please visit the website h2kinfosys.com. So uh, we will initially discuss about the job opportunities, especially in Java, and uh, we'll see like what are the different options you have done likewise, okay? Now, the first and foremost thing is uh, if you guys are here to learn Java, obviously you would be expecting that you would be getting a job in 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 java right so java has got plenty of opportunities uh, you might might have already known it by now uh, but these are the few websites which gives you a lot of uh, different information about what, what are different job opportunities in the market like dice monster career builder indeed okay so i would suggest you guys to please go through I mean, at least create uh, your account in one of these websites or maybe all the websites and look out for all the opportunities, okay? Now, uh, usually uh, what I say is that uh, if you see in this particular slide, we have got Java along with other different icons, also like Spring, Hibernate, Web Services, JMS, right? Usually uh, what happens when you look out for any job opportunities, uh, you would, uh, only look out for Java, but eventually what happens is all the companies, they look out for different other skill sets also. Like uh, they would say, do you know Java along with Spring or Web Services or Hibernate and JMS? Because these are kind of the ecosystem which you need to learn uh, as, as part of the Java so that you excel in your career as well. Okay, so these are the few things which I want you to bring it up uh, that if you simply search for Java as well, they would be looking out for uh, opportunities saying that, okay, do you have Java along with Spring or any of the different other technologies also? So it's not only Java you would be looking out for, but different other keywords which would come up as part of the job, job search, right? So uh, talking about Java, Java has got um, so many openings. Uh, if you go to any of the uh, job market, you would see lot, lots and lots of opening in Java, especially in Java. Okay, so if you compare it with any other different programming language, Java has got, uh, I would say, 20, 30 percentage more than what you would expect on any other different programming language. Okay, so that's all about Java for now. And uh, talking about the course objective, so this is what we are going to learn uh, in our entire session. When I say not today's session, in the entire uh, session of mine, okay? So uh, I'm completely into Java. So the people ask me, do you have, uh, do we learn Python also? I would say, no, we don't use, we don't learn Python in this session, nothing related to Python at all, okay? Or any other programming language, by the way, all right? Okay, so uh, uh, this slide basically talks about that, how would I be going through 
uh, the different technologies, t- different uh, frameworks, and what is the step-by-step process which, with the help of which we can learn the entire ecosystem, right? So you can see that we have got Java in between, and then we have got all the other things in and around it, okay? So let's get started and understand what we're going to learn in every dif- every different steps, okay? And uh, how we are going to use a different framework in different places as well, okay? So again, folks, if you have any questions or any concerns, please type in. There's a, uh, there's a chat window, and I would be happy to answer all your questions, all right? Okay, so let's get started. So, well, uh, if you see in between, uh, in the middle or in the center out here, that uh, Java is a very big icon out here, right? Because that's what we are going to learn out here. Now, uh, if you ask me that is this Spring or Spring Boot or Hibernate, JMS, are these related to Java? Yes, it is related to Java because if you do not understand the core concepts, everything else is like nothing, okay? You will not be able to understand anything, right? Now, in this core Java, in, in specific, uh, so usually what I do is I take almost around 45 hours of uh, class. That is almost 45 sessions you can think about it. Out of that, almost 18 to 20 sessions, I completely dedicate on the core Java skills itself. Right? So almost half of the course is only dedicated to core, core Java skills. Right Now, what are the things we're going to learn in the core Java skills, by the way? right? So... In the core Java skills, we are going to learn about the Java language, obviously, like how to, um, first of all, how to install Java program, uh, I mean, Java as a software, how to make sure that everything is up and running. So those are very basics. Apart from that, we're going to talk about the Java language out here, right? The Java language and what are the different uh, building blocks associated with the Java language, right? Like uh, what is a bytecode, what is a JVM, JRE, JDK, these things are pretty much theoretical concept. We will learn about it, but nothing to do any sort of programming on top of it, okay? So, and then we will talk about the very basic programming constructs. We'll talk about uh, the object-oriented concept, which is the most important uh, aspect of any object-oriented concept, by the way. I mean, any, um, yeah. So almost many of the programming languages, they have this object-oriented concept. So Java is one among them as well, right? We'll talk about uh, multi-threaded concepts, which is pretty interesting. When time comes, you will know what it is. Uh, It's like uh, doing things parallelly uh, at the same time instead of doing it one by one, okay? So we'll talk about string handling, Java collections, uh, input and output operations. This is all about how do you write uh, something to a file system? How do you read something from a file system, okay? We'll talk about that in the input input and output operations. So IO is like input and output, right? So we have got generics, exception handling, JDBC reflection. So there are a bunch of uh, concepts which is in the core Java. Now, why do I need to learn everything? I would say yes, because it's good to have all the knowledge about it. But there are a few mandatory skills which you need to know, like uh, obviously basic programming constructs, object-oriented concepts, string handling, collections, uh, uh, generics, exception handling. So many of the things which you need to know as part of the core Java skills, right? Now, uh, talking something more about Java, uh, you can see that Java was released uh, way back in 1995. It's pretty pretty mature programming language as compared to any other programming language, okay? Uh, you can Google it. Uh, uh, you'll see that this is the probably uh, one of the most stable language as well. Now, one thing is that you can, um, I mean, there's a saying that uh, you write once uh, and run it multiple in multiple different operating system, right? Like Windows, Mac, Unix. So that's one of the saying in Java that you can, you can write a program once uh, and compile it in one operating system, but you can run it in different operating system also, okay? So we'll talk about those things. How is that possible using the JVM? This is one of the key uh, component in the Java ecosystem wherein it makes your program to run in different operating system also. So we'll talk about those things when time comes. Okay, all right, so coming back to the very initial slide, um, once we finish up core Java, right? As I said, I'm gonna almost spend around half of my time only talking about core Java skills. Now, once we finish up core Java, we will pretty much move on to advanced Java concepts, right? Now, when I say, uh, in core Java, as I said, we will talk about 
the building block of how to write a program and and whatnot, right? Now, when we move on to advanced concepts like uh, JSP, servlets, uh, HTML, right? In this case, we will see like how do you access a distributed application? Now, distributed application in the sense anything which is not in your machine, uh, you're trying to access those uh, data from a different machine, right? Like every day you do a Google uh, search, right? So you open up google.com, so a page comes in in your browser and then you type in, you get, uh, you, I mean, you send a request, you get a response back, right? So those kind of concepts are pretty much distributed because it's not any, none of the information is sitting in your machine, but it is basically sitting somewhere in some other machine and they are getting a response back somehow, okay? So we will talk about those concepts in pretty much the advanced uh, course out here, right? So we'll talk about what is a servlet, what is a JSP, what is HTML, uh, not in depth about HTML, but a very pretty much good understanding about what, what is an HTML all about, okay? And then we will talk about Apache Tomcat, which is a server or a, a web server, which we are going to use it as part of our advanced concept, okay? So uh, starting from here, we would, pretty much use this Apache Tomcat in many different other uh, frameworks also, okay? So we will have a very good understanding about what is this, why do we use it, and what is the scope of this Apache Tomcat, okay? All right, so uh, in the meantime, when we learn this core Java, advanced Java, right, uh, we would obviously need some uh, something to write your program. Right, so we have got something as IntelliJ Eclipse. There is something as a NetBeans also, but um, I believe uh, IntelliJ and Eclipse are the one which are widely used uh, as compared to the other IDEs. So I would be using IntelliJ as a as an IDE, and I will also tell you like how to install it, how to write programs, and you you guys will be mastered on uh, any of these. Uh, uh, IDEs, by the way, okay? So if you are pretty much familiar with Eclipse, you can continue using Eclipse, but if you are not, I would, uh, anyhow, we'll be talking about IntelliJ. You would be pretty much comfortable with this uh, in the initial stages itself, okay? So this one, we would be using it uh, probably in the second or third session itself, not um, too far, but yeah. All right, so uh, once we finish up, from core to advanced, right? So let's let's see what do we have in the servlets, right? Now in the servlet uh, or servlet JSP, HTML and Tomcat, we will talk about like how to install Apache Tomcat server, write some HTML code. We will see what is a servlet all about, what is a lifecycle, how some examples. Now some session, uh, the session management, right? Uh, this is a very interesting concept. Uh, it's because you use session, uh, management all the time because once you, let's say, go, uh, log in into your gmail.com, you enter your user ID and password, right? The once you enter your user ID and password, you click many different links inside the Gmail itself. The moment you click on any of the link inside the Gmail or any of the email you want to open it up, it doesn't ask you for a username and password again. Why? Because there is some sort of session management. So that means your browser and the server, that is a Gmail, uh, actual Gmail, it knows how to talk to each other, right? So this is a session management, okay? So now, even though you guys have logged in into the uh, go to webinar, so once you're logged in, what happens? Like you're already in the session right now, correct? And then you're, I'm talking, you're listening. If you want to talk, I will listen or everyone will listen as well, as well right? So once you disconnect, again, you have to log in back. So once you're connected, you're already in the session, right? So we'll see how it has been uh, how it has been taken care. Uh, that's one of the building block of uh, any application which wants to maintain some sessions and whatnot. So we'll talk about those things also, right? So we'll see what are filters like. For example, you want to access a website without even uh, having some uh, authorization or authentication. We have filters whether you are an authenticated user or not, right? So those kind of things also is possible in advanced concepts, right? Because without that, like a lot of hackers, they would come and hack your machine, by the way, okay? So we'll talk about those things, in particular in servlets. Okay, so coming back to the first slide again, uh, once we finish up core to advanced, 
uh, we would move on to something known as Spring. All right now, Spring is a framework. It's also made up made in Java. Now again, uh, just to give you a fact that all these things like servlets and JSPs, these are also Java languages, but we would use it in a different way actually. Okay, so it's something like uh, uh, you you know how to drive a drive a vehicle, right? A, a four wheeler, but Assuming you're, you're driving a very small uh, four-wheeler, uh, all of a sudden someone is giving you a truck to drive. Well, the mechanism is all the same, but uh, it's a bigger one. Uh, it has got a different uh, way of driving and, and whatnot, right? but still it is a vehicle. Okay, so likewise, these are all still Java. I mean, HTML is not Java, uh, but servlets, JSP, these are all still Java. And also a server, which is Apache Tomcat, that is also built using Java itself. We are not going to see how it has been built, using Java, but we are going to use uh, this particular server. Now, again, just to give you a very layman example, you don't care about how the vehicles are made, right? You care about how do you drive that vehicle, right? Because you're the end user, correct? Now, again, if you want to get into a mechanical engineering, want to get into uh, those fields, then yes, you would be more interested in that. But as an end user, you are not, right? So Apache Tomcat is as such. It is built using Java, but we are going to just use it but we are not going to be involved in uh, developing that. Okay. Anyway, so when, when time comes, you will come to know more about it. Uh, but just to give you a heads up that you're not going to do any sort of programming use uh, for the Apache Tomcat. Okay. So as I said, uh, once we finish up the advanced concept like service and JSP, we will move on to Spring and Spring Boot. Spring is a basically a framework with the help of which you can uh, develop enterprise level application okay now talking about spring spring boot uh, we'll see like what is a spring all about uh, what is a dependency injection this is the most uh, important concept in spring that is spring dependency injection we have got annotations we have got aspect oriented programming or aop uh, spring mvc spring boot uh, this is again pretty interesting now uh, we will see what it is when time comes but yeah so we have so many different concepts in Spring also. Like if you see that Spring has been divided into multiple different modules. We say it as a, uh, that Spring Spring is modularized. That means uh, assuming that you are uh, using Spring, uh, no, just think about it, right? So if you want to drive a car, right? And uh, the salesperson says that the cost of the car is, let's say $50,000, correct? You would say, okay, well, uh, I want this car because the engine is so nice, but I don't want the music system in that because the music system by itself cost me $5,000, correct? So what you would say, okay, I just want to remove it, correct? So that's, it's kind of modularized. I'm just giving an example, right? That is still possible. You say that, okay, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to install a Bose music system, but I want to have a very cheaper music system, correct? So you can remove it, plug in something else also. So likewise. So Spring is comes with different other different frameworks. I mean different uh, concepts. But if you want to use only one of them, I would remove one, two, three, four. I'll just use this one here. Okay. So code is important, and on top of it, you can just pick and choose which one to use and whatnot. So we will talk about those things uh, when time comes. Um, if I tell you right now anything, everything will go above your brain, so above your head. So it, it's no way to talk about it. Okay, but yeah, uh, Spring is again, I would say that uh, is one of the most important concept in uh, this Java world because every single company they use Spring, uh, there are few, I mean, I know they are not using Spring, but um, they would eventually use it for sure. Okay, uh, we'll talk about abstraction, like Spring adds a lot of abstraction to this Java world actually. Okay, so we'll we'll understand what is an abstraction also. That's it's part of the core Java concept. So we'll see that then and there. All right. Okay, so we as I said, we will talk about Spring, Spring Boot. Um, this is again one extra thing on top of Spring. Uh, we'll see what is the use of it, how it makes our life more easier as well. Okay. All right. So moving again back to the same slide. Um, so as I said, from core to advanced to spring, and 
in the meantime, when we talk about all these things, right? So there are a few small, tiny things like uh, Apache Maven. We would automatically learn about this because the moment we move on to this stage, we are almost covering up these uh, framework as well. So this is a build tool. Uh, so the build tool in the sense that, uh, just imagine that you you want to buy a car. So you go to a, let's say sales uh, person that, okay, give me a car. So you go to a, uh, not to the factory, you don't go to the factory, you go to a um, center wherein they sell, sell you vehicles. Now, where do that vehicle come in? The vehicle comes from a factory, but again, does all the parts in the vehicle is being built in the same factory, like tires, music system, engine? No, it is not, right? Because engine might be built in uh, Germany, the tires might be in, let's say, Russia, uh, different countries, right? So everything gets accumulated in this factory, in a particular factory, and then it gets built in that factory, correct? So likewise, think about Apache Maven is kind of a build tool which gets everything together and builds you the final product correct so apache maven is as such we will talk about it we'll understand and we would we are going to use it every everywhere once we move on to advanced concept we'll start using this apache maven so um, we will continue using that until our session ends like let's say 45 sessions and likewise okay and also we would learn what is uh, xml that is your extensible markup language. So this is, uh, you would learn it in the very early stage. Uh, we will also talk about GitHub. This is a version control, uh, which is used mainly for uh, storing your files, keeping some versions of your file and likewise. So this is also, we're gonna use it in the very initial stage itself, okay? Now, there are a few other um, tools or framework like uh, JUnit, Log4j, we will understand at the time of uh, learning how to program uh, when we are into the advanced concept or in the core Java concept itself, we can learn. So it's it's like I can plug and play anywhere, but uh, probably we'll, we'll be learning that in the advanced Java concepts, okay? So uh, once we finish up uh, Spring, now again, this does not come as a step-by-step -step process. This will be injected in some different places. All right, so once we finish up Spring, we would be moving on to Hibernate. Now this is a framework which is used mainly for um, connecting to the database in a very simple term. Now Java by itself has got uh, a concept that is JDBC, Java Database Connectivity. So if I just take you to the very first uh, slide here related to the core Java, we got something as a JDBC out here. Correct? So that is nothing but Java database connectivity. So we'll first initially see how to connect to the database using JDBC. And later stage, we will see how to connect to the database using Hibernate. And also in the spring concept itself, there are options to connect to the database using spring related uh, framework. So we will touch base almost every aspect of it, like is core Java, a JDBC is good, a Spring JDBC is good, or Hibernate is good, okay? And then you would give the best judgment by yourself which one is the best one, okay? So uh, Hibernate is nothing but a framework used for connecting to, connecting to the database. So in this Hibernate, we will talk about uh, the overview, the, how do we configure Hibernate, uh, how do you do all sort of crude operations like create, read, update, and delete operations. We'll see different examples, mappings, annotations, and Obviously, I'll be giving a bunch of assignments also as part of the uh, learning uh, structure out here. Okay, so there are many different concepts. I don't want to jump onto those concepts now and talk about it, but yeah. So we'll have a better understanding about how Hibernate works uh, and likewise. Right? Okay. Again, moving on to the very first slide, uh, once we finish up Hibernate, we would move on to something known as uh, web services, right? So you might have heard about this, um, that uh, web service is basically a service-oriented architecture. We would be using SOAP UI for testing the web service, okay? Now, to just give you more understanding about uh, web services out here, like web services are nothing but a 
client and a server side application uh, that communicates over the uh, HTTP protocol. Okay. Now it's pretty much similar to the moment we talk about servlets and JSPs, though these are pretty much similar to it, but it has got more flavor to it actually. Okay, so we'll have more understanding about it. We will uh, understand what is a JAX WS or the SOAP based web service, what is a RESTful web service. We will talk about different approaches to uh, build a web service, like, like a top down approach, bottom up approach, and likewise. Okay, and uh, as I said, we would be using a SOAP UI as a tool in order to, uh, what is that, uh, in order to test a web service. Okay, so the, the, there are different ways of testing a web service. We would use Java code itself directly. We would use a SOAP UI for testing it. There are something as a Postman uh, we can use as a tool. So different ways of testing a web service as well. Okay, all right, so um, I'm just taking you through all the steps. We will again uh, round up all the steps uh, at the end of the session also, okay? So from web services, uh, once we finish it up, and again, one another, another point to add up here is that the moment we learn Spring, we are going to use Spring along with Hibernate, Spring in web services, and Spring in JMS also, and Spring in uh, servlets also, okay? so. I would uh, again give you an alert from now that if you're learning Java, you have to concentrate much on Spring here. Okay, so we would be using Spring every single place actually. All right, yeah, so moving on to that, uh, once we finish up web services, we will be moving on to Java messaging services, right? And now uh, the Java messaging services are nothing but it's like, how do you communicate to a client or in, in plain terms, how do you, I mean, if you talk about a WhatsApp uh, message, right? How do you send a message, right? So you send a message to your friend. If you are client one, you send it to your friend as a client two. And now also in a WhatsApp, you send a message to a group also. Like client one sends a message to the to a group and everyone in that group, let's say client one, sorry, client two, client three, all these are part of the group. So the moment you send a message, all your friends receive those messages, right? So there are two ways of communication. One is uh, point to point, or the other one is your publisher to subscriber or pub sub communication. So we'll talk about different concepts in that. We'll talk about uh, a, a broker also that is the most important uh, component in your JMS, this is ActiveMQ. Now these are mainly used not for the way I said to send a WhatsApp message, but it, it, it is mainly used for communicating with different application. Okay, now uh, you want to trigger an event the moment your inventory, uh, I mean, you're selling cars or vehicles and uh, all of a sudden that today yours, your, uh, you have sold almost double the uh, vehicles as expected. So what you do, you, you would be automatically sending some sort of notification to some factory saying, okay, now you send me more inventories and likewise. So those kind of things can be done using uh, JMS. So there is some concept known as synchronous communication, asynchronous communication, what it is, we'll talk about it and we'll understand more about it as well, okay? Okay, so as I was talking about that, uh, apart from uh, the Main concept, we have got something as a log4j, git, maven, uh, tomcat server, we'll talk about it, jaxp, junit, and uh, we have good amount of other different concepts, which I think I have not even added up here because those are pretty tiny concepts, but important concepts as well, all right? So I think that that's all I had pretty much on the main concepts of the topics which I would be covering up. Apart from that, a couple of more information on the class, uh, I would be initially taking one hour of class and uh, when I say one hour, so when you talk about 45 sessions, uh, just break it down into one hour each, okay? But uh, our objective is to cover up 45 sessions, right? Now, I sometimes might go into go to one and a half hours also, which would be all included in that 45 sessions, right? Now, this session is for almost 50 hours approximately. I added 50 because uh, we might end up into 45 
plus or minus hours. So probably the max hours would be 50 hours. Well, I've just added up out here. And all classes will be recorded, uploaded, and the and the access will be given to you guys so that you guys can access it. Uh, maybe if my session is completing it in uh, one and a half hours or one hour now, I would be uploading it uh, after that or maybe the other day, okay? And you would be given the access to it. And uh, I, I mean, I would be talking about those different uh, mechanics of how do you access it and whatnot in the upcoming sessions itself, right? Okay, so that's that's the uh, the much more information about the class, like how the class will go and, and whatnot. Now, a couple of other things. I would be giving interview suggestions in the class and tips also, some mock-up interview questions if needed, uh, personalized suggestions on interview, uh, suggestions on class assignments if needed. And one good thing is that you can pay only one-time fee and attend the class multiple times. So it's like uh, you might have missed my session for some reason, uh, maybe five or 10 sessions for some reason. You want to join my next uh, batch? Yes, you're, you're free to join the next batch as well. Okay, and then we will be having daily and weekly assignments and reviews on the assignments. Uh, if you have any doubts, you want to check on some assignments, I would do that as well. Okay, and uh, we have a very nice way of communicating uh, over some communication. I'll talk about those things in the upcoming sessions when this, when the, once the actual session starts and likewise. Okay, so coming on to the enrollment, uh, you can very well reach out to this number 770-777-1269 or email to training at h2kinfosys.com or h2kinfosys at gmail.com or if you have any technical questions related to Java, you can very well email me at jram.h2kinfosys at gmail.com as well. Okay, so that's all pretty much I had folks for the, the entire session what we're going to go over and thank you if uh, have any questions, suggestions, feedbacks, please feel free to send those information back to us. And let me, in the meantime, take you to the very first slide wherein we have got everything in it so that if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer all your questions. All right, so the stage is all yours, folks. If you have any questions, please do let me know now. So Tina, uh, regarding the fee structure, I would uh, defer it, you to the admin folks. They would have a better, uh, I mean, information about the fee structure actually, okay? So I'm not the right person to talk about those things. Even I, it's, it's abstracted to me. So if you have no questions, folks, uh, please feel free to leave the session. But again, if you have any questions, please feel free to type in your questions also. And thank you for attending the session as well. So the timings are, it's going to be three days a week. Uh, that's what my, my plan is. And usually it'll be around 8.30 p.m. EST. So it's going to be on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So after this class with certification, I can be prepared for not night. Okay. So yes, so you can, uh, I have different books and suggestions also. So you can uh, be prepared for your Java certification itself, like uh, associate level or um, yeah, there are different levels also. I'll even talk about those levels uh, in the initial sessions itself, wherein you can uh, pick and choose which one you want to give it, okay? So yes, you would be at least uh, uh, ready for your, the very first level of certification for the Java. So the class, uh, Tina, I believe it was supposed to start by this week, but uh, because of his vacations and all, uh, looks like I, we, we would be starting up by next week itself.
what should i prepare before the next class uh, so surya uh, before the next class well you don't have to prepare anything but if you want to install softwares by yourself you can do that like at least install java um in your machine so would there be any project that we would we would be assigned so puja we would be doing a a uh, mini project like as we move along with learning different co uh, components we would uh, use a concept and using that concept we will try to add up all the components in, in it so that would be a mini project by itself okay so that way you uh, you learn and understand like how do you use these all concepts in your project also okay All right, folks. It was nice uh, to have a session with you all, and thank you very much. So, hope to see you soon in the upcoming sessions, and uh, talk to you later. So, how many class do you have a day? How many class do you have a day? So, I usually take only one session a day. Um, so, yeah. As I said, it's uh, three days a week. So sometimes. uh depending on the availability availability of the students i tell them if they are okay to do four sessions because uh it's it's almost uh i believe eight to nine years teaching in this uh, i mean uh, having experience in this teaching line uh, initially believe me or not i used to do five days a session and it was very hard for the students to practice and uh, come up with any questions so i think having three days a week having a day gap sometimes one and a half hours is okay for a session but at least a gap uh, makes a big difference actually uh yeah tina so um i'm i'm in the east region also i mean i'm in the east uh, region so uh for me like 7 is pretty early 9 is pretty late so i think the best timing for me i would i came up with is 8:30 um so that really works well for me actually so let's tr try to come up with that time 8:30 est that'll be good actually all right folks thank you so very much talk to you guys uh, soon uh in my session and bye for now thank you